Министра во изминатите 6 месеци се спроведува кампањата «Климата се менува, зашто не и ти?» Се направија напори за потекнување и изголемување на бројот на климатските акции. Што треба да направиме понатаму за исполнување на Мегинарони Товорски на Република Северна Македонија во поглед на климатските промени? We are already working on the next steps. We have been working over the last few years. The key progresses we made in our uh, in our institution and in our country is the fact that we have a long-term strategy on climate change. It's being finalized as we speak. We have a law on climate change as well, which has been harmonized with all the other institutions because this law will actually encompass all the stakeholders in our country. We are also being ambitious. We have uh, updated our NDC uh, targets for the Paris Agreement, we are actually being ambitious to actually lower our carbon uh, emissions in our country. We also actually have managed to identify where the majority of the pollution is coming from as well. And that is actually the end gener uh, generation of energy. It is one of the big topics we need to look at in, uh, in our country and we need to actually create a long-term strategy on energy. One of the key steps that we need to, if we want to be successful, is to include all the institutions. Because we are actually policy makers as an institution. At the same time though, we need the Ministry of Transport to be involved. We need the Ministry of Health to be involved. We need the Ministry of Education. In other words, we need everyone to be on board so we can actually have success in the long run. Во текот на кампањата забележавме голем одзив на младите луѓе. Пристигна повеќе од 30 нивни постери со пораки за преземање на климатска акција. Како да се канализира ентузијазмот на младите луѓе, но и подготвеноста на граѓанскиот сектор за подигнување на свеста за климатските промени. Што треба да возможиме за поголема нивна вклученост во процесот на носење одлуки, а со тоа изголемување на бројот на климатски акции. I think it's a great positive when you see the youth to issues being involved, they are aware, they see that this is one of the key topics of our generation right now. Um, it is very important that the youth actually speaks up. There's no question about it. I would like to say I'm also part of the youth group. I want, I'm trying to be vocal. Uh, we, globally, the youth is speaking up. We're seeing different kind of uh, events. We're seeing different kinds of uh, activities. It is very important that the youth is actually able to transmit the message appropriately to everyone else, also to the older generations. It doesn't mean that the older generation is not aware of it, but we need to be able to, try to bring the message across appropriately. And it's not just the youth. We need to start at the bottom. We need to start with our children, with our school children, with our educational system. Because if the child, if my child comes home and talks to me about climate change, nature, and what effects we are having as individuals on our nature, something our children will inherit tomorrow, I as a parent will feel morally and emotionally obliged to act upon it. And if we can get the, so we go to the root of it, which is the children, the educational system, the youth, which is very aware of it, to actually make everybody aware, and not just make everyone aware that climate change is happening, but what needs to be done to minimize the effects. I think the NGOs, the civil societies, the youth need to be included. Every single one of us needs to be included. Me, as a citizen, I need to be included. Every single one of us needs to be involved in the process. Уште на почетокот на мандатот најавивте дека ќе имате зголемена комуникација со општините. Како се одвива со работката со нив и како тоа влијае на подобрување на спробувањето со климатските промени? We need to think, do we have sufficient cycle lanes in our country, in our cities? Do we have sufficient public transport? Do we have sufficient green transport, green energy? What do we do with our uh, waste? This is something we all need to be involved in, but this is why everybody needs to speak up, be rational as well. We need to be rational about it. We also need to be realistic about our goals. Sometimes we cannot compare the status we're in today with other countries which, are, which have already gone through the process. So we need to think about how are we gonna, how are we gonna get there? I would love it if we can have the same uh, standards as some Western countries, but this takes time, this takes effort, and this takes all the stakeholders, the institutional stakeholders, the local municipalities, and us as citizens. Анкетата за истражување на јавното мислење покажа дека над 90% од испитаниците се свесни за климатските промени. Дали сметате дека треба да се оди чекор понапред и со воведување на нови програми во образованието и научно-истражувачки активности како извор на податоци и едукација на климатските промени? I think 90% is a very optimistic number, to be honest with you. Now, whether we are aware is one thing. Whether we understand what it means is a different thing. 
I think we need to work a bit harder to actually make people not only aware of climate change, mm. but make people aware of what the effects will be of climate change. But yes, the majority know. They say, yes, I've heard of climate change. The question maybe we need to ask is, what will the effects be of climate change on our daily lives? In the studies, we are approaching it. Unfortunately, I don't see many courses for our students to study environmental issues, climate change. We have certain studies which go in the direction, but do not focus on environmental studies on the, on the climate change. Uh, I have spoken to my colleagues, the Ministry, uh, Minister of Education. I've also spoken to some members of the of academia here. They are willing, they want to, but we haven't initiated it just yet. Because it's not just the idea of making people aware and not just actually talking about it, understanding it. We cannot just expect international experts to come and teach us about it. We need somebody to actually walk it tomorrow. We need our own experts, our local experts, to implement what we're talking about. Ни предстои започнување на преговорите за членство во Европската унија, а токму поглавјето за животната средина ќе биде едно од најтешките. Каков институционален капацитет ќе биде потребен и кои се најголемите предизвици кои што ќе треба да ги надминеме? Chapter 27 is uh, probably one of the largest, if not second largest, of all the chapters. When it comes to the EU negotiations, we know, uh, I won't say difficulties, let's look at it as a challenge. We're going to face a lot of challenges. Challenges we're going to rise up to. Where do I see necessary improvements? Where, where can we improve? We need to get more experts on board in our institution. We have great people working for our institution here, but we need more experts in the field of environment, as we talked earlier. And this is going to cost a lot of money. But we're going to get a lot of support from the EU. We have certain budgetary restrictions in our country. We also need to be realistic about that. We are growing economically, but we have certain restrictions. Now, the laws, we've been working on those. The transposition of the EU keys, we are working on those. We are working very hard on them, and we're getting there. But at the same time, it's not just about the laws, as I said earlier. We're talking about the infrastructure. We're talking about the clean air. We're talking about the waste management. These actually need dedication, a political will to change these things, and we need firm investments. Now, when we, especially now in a time like COVID-19, unfortunately, where we are going to have an economic shortcoming in the future, it's unfortunately, it's going to happen, like it's going to happen in every other country in the world. We need to think about the capital investments we do in the future. So we need to think about investing in the infrastructure, may it be drinking water, wastewater, wastewater uh, treatment plants, energy efficiency, public transport, and many, many others. These are actually, we're going to call these green investments. These green investments are infrastructural investments that are sustainable for the long run. These will be creating jobs. So through chapter 27, we don't, do not only face challenges, we actually have opportunities. Opportunities to improve the standard of life in our country. Because there are three pillars we need to look at. It's the health system, educational system, and the infrastructure and environment. If we can fix these three pillars in our country, then we don't need to be speaking about the youth leaving the country and looking for other opportunities. We will have, them, we will have these standards in our country then. And these are the three pillars we need to focus on. Министерството со кое раководите подготви голема промена на законите за постапување со отпадот, заштита на водите, воздухот и природата. Кои се главните подобрувања кои ќе бидат офатени со овие законски измени? On the clean, on the clean air, we actually proposed it to the government. We passed it in the government. The updated uh, law I went to parliament. Unfortunately, parliament couldn't process it in time before it had to dissolve. And then we are unfortunately in this current situation of the uh, the pandemic of the COVID-19, um, that will actually give more obligations to the local municipalities. Not only recommendations, which were mild at the beginning, this will be more stricter. They actually have to take action. If there are certain rises in the air pollution, they have to take certain action. May it be the transport, may it be the industry, may it be the heating. We know the sources. We know some of them, are, we cannot stop all of them. We can control them better. However, we need the local municipalities, the municipalities to actually act. And only, not only implement mild restrictions, but sometimes to benefit the health of our citizens, have more stricter measures. Uh, the waste laws, we have uh, six different laws on waste, some of them which are brand new, 
So we're actually going to focus as well on the oils, textile, uh, used cars, and uh, tires. Used tires. These are all new laws we're working on. We have worked on them. We are ready. Once the parliament convenes, we will propose it through the government and then propose it to the parliament. So it's not just me. My mandate is finishing, but whoever's coming after us can continue this good work that the staff has done here. Ваше тискуство од банкарството е поврзано со зелените финанси. Колку е возможен развој на економијата во Македонија кој што нема да биде поврзан со емисии на јаглероден диоксид и колку тука е важна енергетската трансформација? Absolutely. For some reason when people think of green economy, everyone thinks with added costs. When we think about green economy, maybe we need to change the terminology of it. Call it more efficient investment. Because when we talk about energy efficiency, it is called green economy. So we're trying to be greener. But energy efficiency means the company, the household, is going to use less energy to fulfill their requirements. Thereby, the investments in the green economy or in the renewables in the long run will benefit the owner of the company, benefit the owner of the household, because they will have lower costs in the long run. The investments will pay off and then they will have lower costs. Recycling. It's also a green economy, it creates green jobs. It is possible, we don't, it's unfortunately not very, it's not a large part of our economy yet. Well, why shouldn't we be able to? We have to think, of, we also need to think of it in the long run. Look at the past, for well, the last 20, 30 years, unfortunately we didn't consider how much we consume. Thankfully our economy has grown, our purchasing power has grown individually as, a, as citizens, so we're able to consume more. So back then we unfortunately didn't think that we're going to consume more today. So we haven't made the development necessary. Now we need to think not only about today, but also about the next 10 years as an economy, as you said, green economy. So the idea is actually, when you speak about green economy, we're actually thinking about the future as sustainable investment. So we can reuse our natural wealth, reuse our raw products we place on the market, and create jobs, create an industry out of it as well. Ви благодарам за одговорите. Се надевам дека овие пораки за превземање на климатска акција ќе допрат до многумина и дека заедничките напори за подигнување на свеста, подобра едукација и информираност ќе продолжат и понатаму.